Funding for Shaper Illus is provided by Surfshark VPN. Tune until the end to find out about their amazing service. Mario Kart DS. Finally, some good f***ing kart again. As novel as it is to look back on games like 64 and Super Circuit, it would be an understatement to say that they haven't aged all that well. But Mario Kart DS is the shit. And I'm saying that as someone who didn't actually grow up with this game. The first time I ever played it was on the Wii U Virtual Console, believe it or not. I loved it then, and a couple years back I picked up a physical copy at a Too Many Games convention so I could play it the way God intended. And honestly, I just couldn't put it down. Unlocking the characters in different carts, making my way through mission mode, and reveling in the sheer joy of Rob, the most nonsensical yet non-Funky Kong character to ever make it into Mario Kart. Oh man, it was such a blast. It also helps that this game's selection of 16 courses is absolutely top notch. One of the best in the entire series. Oh wait, hold on. I just noticed there's four other circles on the track select screen. What do these do? <gasps> Retro courses? Oh yeah, this is the first game that ever brought back previous tracks from across the Mario Kart series. Aside from Super Circuit's remakes of all of Super Mario Kart's tracks. Well, hot diggity dog. Don't mind if I do check these out. Two hours later. I hate Mario Kart DS. Yeah, as great as this game is, the one thing that really holds it back is its selection of retro courses. They couldn't exactly bring back fan favorites due to the technical limitations of the DS. So not only were their selections not the best, but most of them are actively worse than how they were in their original games. Again, mainly due to technical limitations. It's impressive to see them, and it's not like this game has any less value by including them, since the Nitro tracks are still there and still bangers. But yeah, this is easily gonna be the most lopsided ranking out of all the games that include retro tracks. Prepare to see most of them in the bottom half. Ooh boy. Well, we might as well trudge through the unfortunate amount of shit these courses provide if we're gonna get to the good stuff. So let's start off with a course that has the honor of being the very first and currently only F tier track in all of Mario Kart. Disappointment in the game of life. SNES Choco Island 2 is the most disappointing track since my son. It's truly a special and rare feeling to find a course where nothing, literally nothing at all about it works. The music, bland and forgettable. The aesthetic, it looks like actual poo. This isn't just a case where I thought the mud in Waluigi Stadium looked like shit as a kid because I was stupid. No. This is actual boo. I don't understand. Choco Mountain is literally also in this game, and that looks fine. It looks like actual chocolate. What the hell even happened here? Now for the gameplay. <sighs> Well, one thing you'll notice right away about the Super Nintendo courses is that they're ridiculously short. That game compensated for its short tracks by having five laps, but Mario Kart DS famously does not respect each game's preferred lap count, so three it is for these short-ass courses. You'll literally blink and the race is over, but you'll be thankful for that because that means it's less time of your life wasted on Chaco Island 2. You like these embarrassingly tiny bumps in the road that don't add anything and often launch you off the track if you're going at the wrong angle? No? Well then maybe you'll enjoy this gigantic pit of mud that's insanely hard to steer through. Wanna grab that item box? <laughs> Good luck getting over to it, f***er. Every aspect of this course feels specifically designed to either aggravate or depress you. I have not ever had one iota of fun on this track. This is currently my least favorite course in all of Mario Kart. And I don't think anything from 7 or 8 is gonna top it in terms of awfulness. And Super Mario Kart better f***ing watch itself in that regard. Speaking of which, there's three other Super Mario Kart courses we need to talk about in this game. In case you doubted me when I said this was the worst selection of retro courses in the series. Luckily, we're now on to D tier courses. Yippee! Shit. What the fuck happened? We land in the Marianas Trench? SNES Koopa Beach 2. This one gets a lot of negative points for the obnoxious giant puddles of water you can fall in, which have tripped me up on numerous occasions and not in a fun way. Aside from those, 
There are beach sections with nothing on them. You just kind of go in a circle. Sheep sheeps are bouncing sometimes. And uh, what are these green things supposed to be? Trees? Hedges? I, I, I don't know. They're just ugly and they exist, I guess. They're just like me, for real. God, this course sucks so bad. Why is it not an F tier again? I don't know. I guess it's not the most infuriating thing in the world. But that's literally only because Chaco Island 2 is. Count yourself lucky, an even bigger f up than you came along, Koopa Beach 2. This is the greatest course of my life! In all honesty, there is not a single course in Mario Kart history that fascinates me more than Figure 8 Circuit. I just. I have no words. Well, maybe a few. Those being, what, what were, were they, they thinking? thinking? They just plopped this glorified tech demo into the track list and said, okay, well, that sounds good to me. Let's just leave it in there, sure. It deserves to be in the same game as Airship Fortress and Waluigi Pinball and Luigi's Mansion and Yoshi Falls. Okay, maybe that last one is kind of deserved. But just, what a weird course. I understand that the first track in a Mario Kart game is never really a standout. They're basic on purpose. Yeah, 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 I get it. But they always have something. Luigi Circuit Wii has boost pads and a ramp. Peach Circuit has plenty of turns and decorative trees. Luigi Raceway has a hot air balloon with an item. You know, these are things that these courses bring to the table. But then you look at Figure 8 Circuit and... It's nothing! There are no obstacles. There's nothing unique about the track. They didn't even theme it around a random character. It's just a figure eight. It's the Mario Tennis Ultra Smash of Mario Kart tracks. Just, what the hell happened here? This is a course so generic and unspecial that it was a stage in Smash Bros for 10 years and the developers didn't even notice. They called it Mario Circuit in Brawl and Smash 4, even though it was clearly Figure 8 Circuit. They didn't even give it the right name until Ultimate. How does that even happen? I don't even need to pull up the ranking of first courses in Mario Kart games. Because there's no question with this one's placement. Last place, by far. The worst starter course in any of the Mario Kart games I've looked at. But, with that said... Patrick had this extreme ironic fascination with this course because he wanted it to come back in the Mario Kart 8 Booster Course Pass solely because it's in 8 and it would be in Mario Kart 8. Like, it just had to happen, right? This morphed into an obsession with Figure 8 Circuit, with him constantly trying to gaslight me into thinking it was good. Keep in mind that Patrick never actually played this course, or Mario Kart DS in general for that matter. He just really wanted Figure 8 Circuit in the newest game, and would constantly talk about it as if it was the best Mario Kart course of all time. So you know what? Just for you, Patrick, I'll put this course as the best Mario Kart starter course. What are you gonna do? Call me cringe for doing that? Good luck with that, asshole. Figure 8 Circuit is the peak of track design, and no other course will ever touch its greatness. Except for, like, you know, the next 29 courses. The one that started the whole thing! You know, considering how this is the first game to have retro tracks in it, it is a very cute idea to bring back the first ever Mario Kart track- Oh, it's over. The race ended before I could finish that sentence. Good night, Tri-State Area. Yeah, Mario Circuit 1 is one of the tiniest, simplest courses in the entire series. And as much as it definitely deserved to be here, it clearly suffered the most from DS straight up ignoring the fact that the SNES tracks were 5 lap courses in their original iterations. It helped this course feel significantly more lengthy than the one minute you spend racing on it in this game. On top of that, there's a sheer lack of obstacles aside from this single pipe in the road, which is still one more obstacle than figure circuit has. So congrats Mario Circuit 1, you get the edge. Not by much, but I think it should just take what it can get. Yeah! Overall, this course is proof that sometimes your elders don't deserve respect. Turns out old people are just boring as shit sometimes. I ate my grandma. Donuts! Oh, brother. Oh god, we're finally done with the Super Nintendo courses. Thank the lord, this was pure agony. Congrats to Donut Plains 1 for being the best SNES course in the game, as well as the fifth worst course in general. This one has... 
Um, a, a bridge? That's it. That's all it takes to be the best Super Nintendo course in Mario Kart DS. By default, my favorite way to win! I guess I also appreciate that it's sufficiently lengthy compared to the other Super Nintendo courses, which all feel like they're done in the blink of an eye. Which, hey, that fact alone means that God is merciful. But it doesn't mean I'm gonna rank a torture simulator very high just because it's over after only a minute. Nah, this course is perfectly boring and generic with no obstacles and nothing memorable about it. Which is why it gets the edge over the two active problem children at the very bottom, and the course that feels like it was made for babies more than the literal course made for babies. Which we'll get to soon, don't worry. I just have an old foe I need to complain about one more time first. As once I fell. So falls the last Yoshi. If Yoshi Falls has a million haters, I'm one of them. If Yoshi Falls has one hater, then I'm that one. This course genuinely bores me out of my mind, and I feel like it's only looked upon semi-fondly because it's one of the first courses kids would play when booting the game up. I could totally see this course having a lot of nostalgic value to someone. However, I grew up with Wii, and I was never impressed with it there. It's just... I don't know, man. What is there to talk about? Cutting corners through the waterfalls is kind of cool, I guess. But that's pretty much all this one has. It's just a very nothing track. And I think this is even the weaker version of it since you can't even do tricks like you can in Wii. With that said, the fact that it ranks higher on this ranking than it did in my Wii video, despite being worse, should probably tell you that the standards for courses in Wii are just higher. Congrats to Yoshi Falls for clawing its way out of the bottom three in this game. But speaking of my Wii video, I guess I should probably probably talk about one statement I made. So short and boring that it ended up being the last Yoshi themed course in the series. No, seriously, there has not been another Yoshi themed course since this one. It's kind of hilarious actually. Yeah, so uh, that statement might be kind of outdated now. At least it would be if the Booster Course Pass bothered to give us a new Yoshi track, but it didn't! Instead, they gave us Tony Soprano Island, a course that so obviously feels like it should be a Yoshi's Island track. But instead, it's inexplicably themed around a character who isn't even in Mario Kart 8. Yet. Keyword is yet. I'm in a waste management business. Everybody immediately assumes you're- <laughs> It's a stereotype, and it's offensive. But like, come on! Haven't Yoshi fans suffered enough? Oh well, for the time being, Yoshi Falls is still the last Yoshi-themed course to ever be in Mario Kart. I'm just glad that statement from my Mario Kart Wii video isn't outdated at all. I also like the secret bridge on Tony Soprano Island that's made of Gabagool. Gabagool, over here. Anyway, on to the C-tier courses. God, that took way too long to get to. Wow, this is garbage. You actually like this? Look, it's really not that bad, you guys. I mean, it's bad, don't get me wrong. I don't think there's a single retro course in all of Mario Kart that misses the point of the original track harder than DS Baby Park. I mean, what is this shit? What is this bullshit? Why bring this course back in a game that doesn't have any giant items and also reduce the lap count from seven to five? Why do this? Why did you do this? Why? 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 I demand a written apology on my desk by the end of the day, or your ass is fired. Cool. The visual presentation is also just not it, Chief. All the charm from the Double Dash version has just been flushed down the drain, and all we're left with is this plain, pitiful oval. It's objectively a downgrade from the original in every possible way. And yet, I don't know, it's still Baby Park. The music is still frantic and stellar. There's still a large buildup of shells and bananas for you to dodge across each lap. It's like, not the worst thing I've ever played, and I'd sooner pick it over like six other courses. Don't get me wrong, it's still bad. I'm not trying to argue it's not. But there's a smidge of the baby park I know and love in here. Even though as a remake, it still kind of fails at almost everything. I still like it better than Yoshi Falls, I'm sorry. You may wish for an apple or an orange. But you will get a peach. GBA Peach Circuit. Look, this has got to be one of the worst retro choices in the whole game. The SNES courses almost all suck, so the choices they made don't really make that much of a difference. The GameCube courses were chosen based on limitations and an inability to bring the more complex ones over, so I don't really blame them. The N64 choices were okay, could have been better, but could have been worse, and the GBA selections are honestly pretty solid. Aside from this 
this one. These are not complex courses, so you basically could have chosen any of them. And the one you went with is the boring circuit course with no obstacles or interesting theme outside of orange trees. Also, some people in the comments of my super circuit video said they were peach trees. That makes way more sense. But I don't know, they look like oranges to me. You can't even get that right, Peach Circuit. At least there's some decent turns and it feels sufficiently lengthy. But oh my god, this was arguably the lamest possible choice from Super Circuit you could have picked. There is actually no reason to ever play it. And yet, it's still better than seven other courses in this game. How do you manage that? Happy birthday! Well, this is definitely an improvement over the old Frappe Snowland, I guess. Lakitu is less prone to just swoop in and pick you up when you go slightly off the required path. Oh, you've got to be kidding me! Snowmen are a lot easier to dodge and don't spin you out nearly as drastically. It's, uh, I don't know, it's fine now, I guess. Not really that special aside from the music and general atmosphere, which were the only things I liked about the original. But this version is playable now without obnoxious snowmen cluttering the road. Congratulations! It now meets the baseline requirements for a functional Mario Kart course and nothing else. I like to move, move. Yeah, I like to in contrast to Frappe Snowland, which got a bit better in DS, I feel like Moo Moo Farm got a tad bit worse. It's still largely the same overly simple track with not much of note to talk about, but I really like the risk reward factor in the 64 version where drifting on the right side was a bit trickier thanks to all the moles in your way. Here, the number of moles have been significantly toned down, which makes an already baby level course even babier. But that said, I don't know, the music and atmosphere is still nice. Not an awful track, just kind of okay, I guess. Yeah, in hindsight, Desert Hills was a lot better on the Wii. I think the turn suited that game's drift system better. Whereas here, it's abundantly clear that this course is heavily being carried by its Super Mario Bros. 3 aesthetic inspirations. Because wow is this layout unspecial. It's just such a lame course, joining the long line of desert tracks in this series that usually underwhelm. It's not the worst of them, but it's far from the best. And for those of you keeping score at home, both Desert Hills and Yoshi Falls rank among my bottom three least favorite Nitro courses in this game. I'm beyond thrilled that they decided to bring both of these back immediately for Mario Kart Wii. Aren't you thrilled as well? Thin ice, Mario Kart Wii developers. You guys are on thin ice. Actually, you did make Coconut Mall, so never mind. I forgive you completely. That's Luigi. Show him a little respect. Ah, nothing like bringing back the very first course from Double Dash in order to complement the very first course from Super Circuit and the very first course from Super Mario Kart. Do you see the problem with the retro tracks in this game yet? Anyway, while Luigi Circuit was indeed Kino in its original Double Dash iteration, it kinda leaves a lot to be desired here. The course was made a lot wider, meaning you don't bump into racers going the opposite direction nearly as much anymore. And that's on top of the lack of huge character-specific items that made things a lot more hectic. Yeah, a lot of the same problems from this game's remake of Baby Park rear their ugly head here. But it's still kinda decent to race on. I don't know, not that great of a remake, but it's not the worst. Dinosaur Circuit Rock. The DS version of GameCube Yoshi Circuit is the very definition of the vibes are off. It wasn't quite as butchered as Luigi Circuit in terms of its gameplay, but man is a lot of the charm gone in this remake, unfortunately. No tunnel shortcut, no Yoshi copter flying around, and in general, a much drabber and less vibrant color palette. It's okay, but it's definitely far from my first pick in terms of the retro offerings in this game. I mean, at least the course is still shaped like a Yoshi. That's nice, I guess. I know that's to be expected, but you'd be surprised at how badly this series can f*** up the layout of a retro course. You pass the bar? Out of all the Nitro courses in this game, DK Pass has always just felt like the one that exists to me. I have no strong feelings on this course one way or the other. It's always just been fine enough, I guess, in my eyes. It's alright! I like the music a lot. It's very gentle and lovely and suits the wintertime aesthetic incredibly well. There's a cool secret item box that always gives you mushrooms, so that's nice. And dodging the giant snowballs can be pretty satisfying. But mostly, this course is just a lot 
of snow, without doing anything to really stick out from any other snow themed course, or any other DK course for that matter. Like, what does this one have to do with DK? There's no correlation there. I usually love this Funky Monkeys tracks, like DK Mountain, Jungle Parkway, Jungle Full Stop, and Summit. It's a wide array of iconic and memorable courses, and this one falls kinda short of that status. It's alright, right. but nothing too terribly special or memorable. Oh my god, Super Mario! What are you doing here? DS Mario Circuit is probably best known for stirring up drama in the Mario Kart community when it was added to the Booster Course Pass instead of Airship Fortress. It probably shouldn't have been included over the much better DS courses, but I'd be lying if I said it wasn't one of the better Mario circuits in the series. Not much of a compliment, but hey. There's a decent amount of fun turns, some unique fire spitting piranha plants, a nice view of Peach's castle in the background, and a solid music track. It's about as good as you can reasonably expect a Mario circuit to be, and I'm glad it's getting its day in the limelight again thanks to 8. But like, come on though, over Airship Fortress, really? Whatever, let's talk about some good ass B tier courses now, so we don't need to get into that discourse again. Mm, what's it called? The Banshees of Inner Sharon, I was thinking. I really wasn't expecting this going in, but I honestly enjoyed this game's iteration of N64 Banshee Boardwalk a lot more than the original one. It's hard to really describe why. I guess it just feels a lot more natural to me with DS's controls and graphic style. Like in 64, it stuck out in a bad way from the rest of the courses and felt more video game level-y instead of an actual location you would race on. On top of that, the narrow boardwalk didn't really mesh well with 64's not great control scheme. Whereas in DS, it's much easier to drift properly and not bump into walls the whole time. It's honestly kind of decent here, and I can appreciate what they were going for with this course better than what the 64 version provided. Not bad, I guess. And now we come to battle mode. Which, uh, don't tell anybody, but this is easily one of the best battle modes in the whole series. Balloon battle is ludicrously fun because you're able to blow up balloons you have in reserve. And I mean that literally, you blow into the DS's mic. Or you can hold a button down, which is the lame way to do it for pussies. I usually just hold the button down, TBH. But wow, do these reserve balloons add so much strategy. Like, the less balloons you have, the better items you get. So when is the best time to blow one up? I don't know, man. You decide. So friggin' good. And Shine Runners is cool. Don't get it confused with Shine Thief or Coin Runners. No, no, no. This is a whole different beast where it's elimination based. Whoever has the lowest number of shines when time runs out is out of here. And there's multiple rounds to go through. A very unique take on battle mode, though I definitely prefer Balloon Battle. Honestly, this might be my second favorite version of it after Mario Kart 64. And this excellent mode is bolstered by a great selection of six battle arenas. Four new and two retro. Let's kick it off with the only lame one of the bunch. Number six, Palm Shore. It's a beach. The water slows you down and that's annoying. That's literally all there is to say about it. Number five, Tart Top. Already a vast improvement over the previous course. I love its circular nature and the big jump in the middle. It's so satisfying to nab a shine sprite in the very center via that jump. Plus, hitting a cake-like obstacle bounces you around and splatters your screen with a bit of frosting. That's hella charming, I'm sorry. Good ass battle course. Number 4, Nintendo DS. Quite a bit bigger than the GameCube battle arena. There's plenty of space to avoid the action, yet nowhere to hide. A large and satisfying open arena. Plus, like, come on, it's a giant DS in space. That's the greatest thing ever. Number 3, Twilight House. Simply iconic, with plenty of rooms to hide, trick your opponents out, or get into some old-fashioned one-on-one dueling. The theme and aesthetic is really cool as well. I just wish they could have used a more appropriate music track than the one they haphazardly slapped on every battle course in this game. Come on, just play the Luigi's Mansion music on this stage, and then it'd be pretty much perfect. Number 2, Pipe Plaza. Oh look, they brought back the best battle course from Double Dash. Awesome! It's just as excellent and hectically fun as it was there. Pretty much the only fully intact remake of something from Double Dash in this entire game. And number one, Block Fort. Oh look, they brought back the best battle course from 64, and pretty much the entire series. Awesome! It's bizarre how bad so many of the retro race course selections in this game were, and yet, they picked the literal two best options ever to bring back for battle mode. You'd think they might have felt obligated to sprinkle some Super Mario Kart shit in there, but you know what? 
I'm not complaining. Block Fort isn't quite as good aesthetically, but otherwise, pick a fort to become king of and get ready for some of the most fun you can possibly have with your friends playing a Mario Kart game. There's no required teams or time limit bullshit. The only thing you're missing from 64 is turning into a bomb car when you die. But you know what? It's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Shout out to Block Fort for being the pinnacle of battle course design in every universe. And also, shout out to Surfshark VPN for funding my videos where I get to spread the good word of Block Fort to the masses. You're welcome. Anyway, yeah, Surfshark VPN time. With Surfshark, you can trick your browser into thinking you're in another country, thus allowing you to access exclusive Netflix content you couldn't get otherwise. I know Figure Eight Circuit is the region of the Mushroom Kingdom that gets the most riveting content on streaming services, but with Surfshark, you don't need to physically travel there to see it all. Just watch it from... I don't know, wherever you live. Yoshi Falls, for all I know. Plus, use its Surfshark alert system to get alerts anytime your email address or password is compromised. Surfshark alert scans various databases of leaked information and notifies its users if their data is found so they can take action, which is an absolutely invaluable feature. Surfshark is also totally unlimited, meaning you can use it on as many devices as you like, even all at the same time. No other VPN allows this. Go to surfshark.dl slash Rillis and enter promo code Rillis to get 83% off and 3 extra months of Surfshark VPN for free. It's an amazing deal, and it's even better because it comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you're not satisfied, you can cancel during those 30 days and get your money back. If you're looking for a great VPN, there's no reason not to give Surfshark a try. Once again, head to surfshark.dl slash Rillis and enter the promo code Rillis. Have a great time with Surfshark VPN. Look at that pale skin. He's been living in his brother's shadow for too long. I may not have enjoyed the inclusion of Peach Circuit, but you know what? I can give GBA Luigi Circuit a pass. I liked it in Super Circuit, and I like it here. I think the rain effect weirdly isn't as pronounced in this version as it is on the GBA, but it makes up for that with the far more ominous and stormy looking backgrounds. Gameplay wise, it's pretty much the same, except now it's in a game that controls better, so that's cool. Fun puddles to dodge, good turns, a unique atmosphere. I definitely didn't expect it to crack the top half of the list going in. But yeah, it just remains a surprisingly solid and fun time. They really didn't butcher any aspect of it, which is miraculous for a Mario Kart DS retro course. What inspired you to build a second castle right next door to the original? I'm pretty sure Bowser Castle 2 was my least favorite of the GBA Bowser's castles. Honestly, I'm too lazy to check. Does it even matter? Who cares? Well, turns out it's a lot easier to appreciate when it doesn't have three siblings to compete with. There's a succession reference in there somewhere, I just know it. Great atmosphere and rockin' music. But it's the abundance of ramps that really does it for me here. I know a lot of people say that ramps just feel hollow in games without trick systems, and usually I agree, but there's something about these ones, where they give you the perfect amount of distance to get over these tiny lava pits, that really satisfies me. It's just kinda fun. Plus, it's night and day how interesting this course is compared to the Super Nintendo tracks and GBA Peach Circuit. Not all flat tracks are bad. Who would have guessed? Nothing's out of reach. We got the backyard beach. Cheap Cheap Beach is like the perfect standard quality level for a course. It's basically the textbook definition of good without doing anything to be very exceptional nor doing anything to actively piss me off. There's a decent level of variety in the terrain, from the boardwalk, to the beach, to the jungle sections. You can cut corners along the shoreline, there's crabs to dodge. It pretty much fills all the standard requirements for a course that's decent, and not much more. I really don't have anything more to say. I'm just pretty proud of the courses in this game that aren't terrible. So good for Cheap Cheap Beach. It earns this spot. You wanna play Mushroom Bridge later? Yeah, I mean like, Mushroom Bridge is definitely the least ruined of the bastardized boys from Double Dash. Still clearly inferior to how it was before, with the biggest L having to be the removal of the bridge shortcuts. That's like, half the appeal of the course gone right there. But like, I don't know, there's still cars, the road is around the same size, the music is still great despite being horribly compressed. Ultimately, it's still a good course that I enjoy racing on, even if it evokes such tragic feelings of remorse whenever I think about what we used to have. And I know everyone talks about the Wiggler bus getting removed, but I find it weirder that there was a Moo Moo Farm truck in Double Dash that was taken out for DS, despite the fact that Moo Moo Farm is in DS, but not Double Dash. 
cash. Maybe they figured having the actual Moo Moo Farm in this game meant there was no longer a need for this truck boy. But that's stupid. The more Moo Moo Farm, the better, says man who ranks Moo Moo Farm in CT or two videos in a row. Peanut butter chocolate flavor. Oh hell yeah! They made an actually playable version of Choco Mountain! Finally! Don't get me wrong, the course is still a bit narrow, which makes it somewhat tricky to drift at points. But for the most part, this version finally allows me to enjoy the fun layout, iconic music, and exquisitely delicious aesthetic of my beloved Chaco Mountain. Plus, it's a lot harder to fall off the edge of that one part and get sent backwards on the track. Like, you have to actively be trying to do that here, instead of the N64 version where it's the status quo. So yeah, I heckin' love Chaco Mountain. And this time for more reasons other than it being nice to look at and listen to. Country Road! Shroom Ridge is kind of a deceptively lovable course. It looks really plain and boring from the outset, but once you start racing on it, it reveals itself to be a super enjoyable time. You take all sorts of turns that are great to drift on, while also making sure to dodge all the cars going back and forth on this windy country road. Many people have said before that it reminds them of going on a road trip, and yeah, absolutely. There are so many roads in real life that match up perfectly with the vibes this one is going for. Every time I'm on a road between a big hill and a cliff, I just think, no way, I'm on Shroom Ridge. It's just very very pleasant, making up for some pretty standard aesthetics with a great layout, fun obstacles, and one stellar music track. Anyway, we're now at the top 10, which conveniently enough is where the A tier track start. Let's see what we got. Twitter stinks. I'm leaving. Wario Stadium is the developers taking a look at the embarrassment with the same name on the N64 and saying, okay, that was a funny joke but let's actually make a real course this time. This track is loaded with exciting boosts, ramps, and fire bars you gotta do your best to dodge. All as you listen to the great music that totally doesn't remind you of a better track in this game. I like the part with the speed boosts spaced out by mud, cause if you don't hit all of them, you're at significant risk of slowing down considerably thanks to this icky mud-like goop. It adds a bit of challenge that I can appreciate. And the same goes for making sure you hit these ramps at the right angle so you don't go off-road or hit the fire bars. It's a sufficiently challenging course that I can't get enough of. Plus, I like the fact that the walls are the same color as Flan. What can I say? I'm a simple man. Flan course is awesome course. One last thing before I move on, I just want to draw your attention to the fact that this track is ranked number 10. And it's also the weakest course in this game's Special Cup. Literally, the entire Special Cup in Mario Kart DS is in the top 10 tracks of the whole game. So, I don't want to see any debates over which game has the best Special Cup. Got it? Lolly -lo -lay -lo. Lolly -lo -lay -lo. If there's one thing Mario Kart DS was great at, it was making awesome references to other Mario games through its tracks. And Luigi's Mansion is no exception. Not only does it nail the spooky atmosphere of its source game, but it even provides us with ample fan service as we get to see portrait ghosts adorning the walls of the mansion. Now that's epic. But then there's the fact that only like 20% of this course takes place inside the mansion itself. Most of it is this semi-original muddy forest area outside, and like, it's not bad, it doesn't overstay its welcome. The graveyard of walking trees are especially cool. But the overabundance of mud in this course does kind of give me war flashbacks to Chaco Island too. Hey, look at that! The course is tapping into my worst fear. I guess it is a great horror-themed track. Yeah, it could be stronger and more connected to the titular mansion, but I think it's still a definite standout in this game that I really enjoy. Also, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this weird dream I had. Basically, in my dream, Nintendo announced this course was coming back for the Booster Course Pass, but for some reason, they were trying to pretend that it originated in Tor, so they renamed it Boston Building. Honestly, that sounds amazing. I hope I can play it sometime soon. I think from now on, I'm just gonna call this course Boston Building. Can't wait for someone to click on my Mario Kart 7 ranking without seeing this one, and just get extremely confused when I get to this course. If they leave a comment on my Mario Kart 7 ranking asking why I called it Boston Building, it is your civic duty as a viewer of this video to reply with Zoo Wee Mama. That'll show them. Whoa! Is this heaven? <laughs> 
And the award for best retro track in the game, by far, goes to Sky Garden. Considering how generally awful the retro selection here was, it's honestly kind of miraculous that they picked the best course from Super Circuit to bring back, instead of like Yoshi Desert or some shit. And you'd think a flat course like this wouldn't really have the same appeal in a game with real courses, but miraculously, it's still the same standout it was on the GBA. The layout is fun, and there's an abundance of ramps for you to take shortcuts and cut corners on. That, combined with the enhanced majesty of the music and aesthetics, make this easily the best version of Sky Garden out there. The fact that it's this low on my list just goes to show the incredibly high standard for courses in this game. But I think it's also a testament to just how strong this course is that it managed to break into the top 10 as a retro GBA track. Pretty impressive, not gonna lie. I can't wait to see what they do with it in the future. It's gonna be great, right? Right? Welcome to the sun-drenched tropical paradise of Isle Delfino. Delfino Square is just awesome. As I said before, this is easily one of the Mario Kart courses I would most want to live in. It's welcoming and inviting, while also providing some satisfying alternate paths to take and shortcuts to pull off. The music is unbelievably cozy, and the vibes are absolutely immaculate. I also like how unique it is compared to the rest of Isle Delfino. It feels like it could exist within Sunshine's setting, and yet it also holds up on its own. I also really like the shirts hanging on these clotheslines, even though I have no idea who they belong to since Piantas don't wear those kind of shirts. Or any shirts at all. This is truly one of the most prominent unsolved mysteries of any Nintendo game, and I will dedicate the rest of my life to getting to the bottom of it. You planted grass? GRASS! Eagle-eyed viewers might notice that in my Mario Kart Wii video, I actually ranked Delfino Square higher than Peach Gardens. But, here we are in their original game, and I actually prefer Peach Gardens ever so slightly. Why? Well, I had to deduct points from DS Delfino Square, because you can't do tricks on the drawbridge, and that's kind of the most epic thing ever. Meanwhile, there's no tricks in the DS or Wii version of Peach Gardens. Plus, the colors are a lot prettier in the DS version somehow, so yeah. DS Peach Garden Supremacy. Even though the Mario Kart 8 version is probably the best one. Okay, I gotta get off the tangent train now. Gorgeous track with lovely music and a lot of shortcut opportunities through these flower beds. I love weaving in and out of the hedges and avoiding the chomps. The music and aesthetic are lovely. It's a course with a deceptive amount of things going on in spite of how simplistic it looks at first glance. But it absolutely earned its place in the special cup because it is unbelievably special. I remember playing a friend's copy of Mario Kart DS when I was like nine, and this course really stuck out in my mind as being one of my favorites. Then I unlocked it on Wii and was like, oh cool, I can play this one again. Then I proceeded to grow up with Wii and pretty much forget all about DS until I bought it on the Wii U Virtual Console like 10 years later or something. Bottom line is, I've cared about Peach Gardens for longer than you can possibly know. It's a surprisingly fantastic course, and I definitely don't mind its inclusion in almost all future Mario Kart titles. You make a loop -de -loop and pull. What was the first course in Mario Kart history to have anti-gravity? Oh, uh, that would be the first course in Mario Kart 8. So, uh, Mario Kart Stadium, right? No, dumbass. It was Rainbow Road on the DS. Get real. I love the fact that the developer said, Oh, anti-gravity hasn't been invented yet? F*** you. We're making a loop-de-loop -loop anyway. Have you ever watched the map screen when you go on that loop? Cause that shit goes crazy. Oh yeah, and the rest of the track slaps too. I feel like this is probably the most underrated Rainbow Road of the bunch. Like, no, it's not quite on the same level as Wii's or 7's, but it definitely deserves to be talked about more as a really great one. The layout is strong, it's sufficiently challenging without being overbearingly difficult, and god those twists are just so satisfying to drive on. It really captures the essence of what a Rainbow Road should be, sticking out from the rest of the tracks in the game in a really cool and unique way. And the music's wonderful because it's Rainbow Road. That probably goes without saying. Showtime. Bowser Castle. Okay, seriously, what is with this series going back and forth between Bowser and Bowser's castle? Y yeah, just pick one. Pick one. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is easily one of the best Bowser's castles in the whole series. I think it stands right up there with the N64 one as being one of my all-time favorites. What do you do when limitations prevent you from having a giant mechanical Bowser statue? I don't know, you do something original for a change. This one relies on an abundance of moving parts to make your journey feel as precarious 
obvious as possible. There's a large gear Bowser probably stole from TikTok clock, shifting rectangles towards the end, and my personal favorite detail, the big spinny cylinder. I love this thing so much, and not to brag or anything, but I've literally never fallen off of it once in my life. I don't even know what's down there. I'm just too good at video games to find out, I guess. But having a track with multiple routes of progression is always cool, as are the tight turns, stellar music, and an abundantly oppressive atmosphere that all come together to embody one of the greatest and most complete feeling Bowser's castles in the entire series. I want all the courses in this archetype to come back as retro tracks, but it is a federal crime that this one in particular hasn't. I guess Mario Circuit was more important. Thanks, Booster Course Pass. Love you. Airship Slice! Yeah, I mean, Airship Fortress is a classic for a reason. This stunning and intense tribute to those classic levels from Super Mario Bros. 3 has endured for years as a fan favorite. Between the pesky moles, shifting fire bars, loose crates, and that stellar opening part where you're racing against a barrage of bullet bills. Oh man, this one just has it all. The music is on ominous, but in a playful, almost taunting way. I like the part where you get launched to the other tower, mainly because in most other games, there's either a glider that pops out of your cart, or an animation of your character flailing around during this cannon cruise. But here, you just stay perfectly still. We. The only part of this course I'm not super keen on is this last big turn in the final tower. I don't know, it's a bit of an empty last stretch of the course. It could use some sort of obstacle perhaps. But that's a nitpick, because wow this course goes hard in every other area. But there's still two absolute S tier courses I need to talk about. So let's see what they are. You know, it's kind of funny how the detail on the Mario Kart 8 version of TikTok Clock makes the original DS iteration look like an unfinished beta version. No shit! It's also funny how said unfinished beta ass looking version is nonetheless in S tier course, and my second favorite in the entire game. I mean, holy shit, this course has so much going for it. Starting with the theme. How often do you see a direct Mario Kart adaptation of a stage from one of the main platformers? It's honestly pretty rare, which makes this Mario 64 homage an absolute treat. It's even more direct of a tribute than Airship Fortress, which is based on a level theme from Bros 3, but it isn't quite as specific as this direct 64 parallel. Even without the reference, you're racing inside a clock. Well, I've heard of racing the clock. Well, this is ridiculous. That's just a cool concept on its own, with an on-point aesthetic and a ton of horizontal and vertical shifting gears. They fit the theme and provide a ton of crucial decisions to make regarding where you should be driving. Which way are the gears turning and which way will slow me down? Am I gonna bump into this pendulum? Can I hit these boost panels without getting struck by the spinning clock hands? There's just so much at play with this course. It's easily one of the most dynamic tracks the series had ever seen at this point, and I've never had a single race on it that wasn't a complete blast. The music is kinda average, not bad at all, but not outstanding. And that's really the only bad thing I can say about this course. It deserves to be remembered as one of DS's crowning achievements. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go give the gold crown to the same course everyone else gives it to. Yeah, I mean, like, come on. There were no other options for number one. Waluigi Pinball remains the absolute GOAT from Mario Kart DS. It just does everything right, sporting one of the most unique concepts for any track in the entire series, a psychedelic cavalcade of bright neon colors, special item roulette sound effects that only play on this course, and a plethora of bumpers, flippers, and pesky pinballs to dodge. I was admittedly a doubter when I first gave this course a go in its Mario Kart 7 iteration. Not because of any changes specific to that version. Nah, I just found it annoying whenever I was blindsided by pinballs I had no chance of seeing. I just didn't see the appeal of that. But I was a fool. That extra element that forces you to plan out your route far ahead of time, whether you're racing down the metallic track against a ball in the center lane, or you're on the floor where the balls are traveling every which way with no rhyme or reason, you always need to be on your toes. And if you pay enough attention, you can formulate an optimal route in your mind that usually differs between each lap. 
That's what I call a dynamic course. It just feels so alive. Like you're always jolted awake by this candy-coated thrill ride. The turns are sharp and satisfying. The music is relentlessly energetic. The essence of Waluigi can be felt in every inch of this debaucherous wonderland. This is undoubtedly the crown jewel of Mario Kart DS. My favorite course in this entire game. So yeah, overall an excellent installment in the series, with a mostly amazing selection of brand new tracks, and an extremely mixed selection of retros, with more duds there than winners. Well, no more ambiguity. I'm just gonna tell you straight up that next time, I'm gonna be taking a look at Mario Kart 7, which is kinda sorta the inverse of DS. The brand new tracks in that game are a bit of a mixed bag, with plenty of bangers, but also quite a few duds. But the retros, oh baby, the retro tracks in Mario Kart 7. Mmm, that'll be exciting. See you then. Good night, Tri-State Area.